Greetings from LifePoint Church. We are really glad that you've joined us today. We hope you're already beginning to enjoy this Christmas season. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. So today, last, last week we lit the, the uh, candle of hope. And I'm going to light that again today. But today we have the candle of peace. Advent, it's a time of preparation, preparing for the celebration of the coming of Jesus Christ, Savior of the world. So the Advent reading for peace comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 5. A voice of one calling, In the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all the people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Today, again, we light the candle of peace. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Father, for the gift of Christmas and what it means. And as we all go through this turmoil of this era, this time, and recognize that probably every generation before us has gone through some type of turmoil as well, we look forward to the peace that God can give us. Help us to understand your word today, to understand that this peace is a peace that we don't just claim in the future, but it's a peace that we can claim this very day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Hey, neighbor, you need a hand? I, I'm, I'm good, thanks. Don't worry, I'm coming. Santa's little helper's on his way. Hey, ha <laughs> ha. So you got the star that'll guide Chris Kringle to your chimney. Good move, my man. Oh, uh, no, it's the uh, star, star of Bethlehem. Right, yeah, Bethlehem, North Pole. Same thing, right? No. Oh. Nope. Uh, no. Uh, 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 sorry. It's the, uh, the star that, you know, the Magi. Right. Magi. What is the Magi? I found something on the web about emojis. Check it uh, out. Uh, the Magi? The, uh, the, the wise men who came to see the Messiah. Christ? The, uh, Son of God. Him? Yeah. Then he would grow up to become Santa. No, no, no. He's gonna grow up and he's gonna pay for the sins of the world. Guess that'd be a pretty hefty price tag, huh? Hmm. Yeah. That's why it's called Christmas. Christ mess. Well, I wish you would have told me all this before I spent my Christmas bonus and all that junk over there. Thanks a lot. Merry Christmas. No, hey, I... <laughs> you look like my Santa! <laughs> so today we're talking about peace. Peace as we continue in this Advent series. And you know, the, the video you watched just a moment ago, it's cute, it's funny. But you think about it, those who don't know Jesus, those who don't understand what Christmas is all about, this idea of peace in the midst of everything we're going through right now, it's just foreign to us. The guy says, well, what are the Magi? You know, None of that stuff adds up to them as they have the Santa Claus and all the other things that are fun. It's okay to have some of the fun things of Christmas. But unless you understand, unless you know Jesus, it's really hard to understand the peace that Christmas can bring you. And that's what I want to talk about today because really whether you are a, Christmas, a Christian who knows Jesus or you're one from the outside world who does not yet know him, you know, we're really running in an in-between time. We're running in a time where, yes, we celebrate the birth of Jesus, but he's not he's, he hasn't come for the second coming yet. So there's all this turmoil in between. So sometimes it's hard even as followers of Christ to understand, to fully claim the peace that he can offer. The peace that I'm going to talk about today seems out of reach but it's within your grasp if you know Jesus. Our text today comes from 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. Reads as follows. But do not forget this one thing. Dear friends, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some, as some understand slowness. Instead, he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord, it will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. 
since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we're looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you're looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. Father, thanks for your scripture. Thanks for your promise. This morning, as we get into your word a little bit, a little bit deeper, open our eyes to what you have to say. Open our understanding and our expectation to truly grasp the peace that this Advent week tells us that we can have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, this is really an unusual text uh, when you're talking about peace. It's really, it, obviously it doesn't come across as warm and fuzzy. It doesn't have a, the, the glow of Christmas. It's not, um, it's not really portraying that gospel image that probably so many are looking for and so many see up in the, the picture windows and on people's front, door, uh, front lawns, the gospel image of the shepherds watching their sheep. In fact, it's not portraying even the, the peace and tranquility of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Instead, this image of the day of the Lord arriving like a thief, it, pro it projects images of fear, not joy, and certainly not peace. Caught up in the glow of the season, we oftentimes forget that while we're celebrating Christ's coming to earth as a baby in Bethlehem, we also have to look ahead to Christ's eventual return. So the reality is that we're in that in-between time right now, between the time of the glorious coming of Jesus as a baby that we celebrate today and the second coming when he will come again. We're, we're, right, we're kind of in between those two pictures. It's, you know, oftentimes it's referred to as the already but not yet. And the early reader that read 2 Peter, the early reader in biblical times themselves, was probably even more confused. The early reader was facing more surprise as they had expected Christ's return to, to happen quickly. And certainly, they're probably wondering, as even some of us do today, they're probably wondering, why? Why the delay? What's going on here? Am I at fault? If not, how am I to live during this time? What's my life really to look like? And Peter responds to how they're to live. He says, live in peace. And that message is still the same for you and I today. As we go through the turmoils of this world, Peter's telling us, live in peace. Live in peace. The text really... Uh, it, it, it leads us towards fear, but it's not meant that way. It's not meant that way at all. The text is really a text of promise and hope. You see, people are concerned with Christ's return. They're wondering, is he going to return at all? And the slowness of God not coming back right now in this current time. Church, it's not because God has forgotten his promise. And it's not because the promise of Christ's return is, is weak, it's strong. The promise of Christ's return is solid. He will return. But it's the reason for the slowness is because God is patient with humanity. He waits for us all to repent. His word says that he desires not, that not one is lost, but that all are saved. And that you should take some, some triumph in. Recognizing that whether it's you yourself or your son or daughter or mom or dad or somebody else that you've been praying relentlessly about and wondering, is this ever going to come about? Well, God is patient. 
He loves, he loves you. But he loves that one you're praying for as well. And he's patient and he wants them to repent. He has not forgotten his promise. He has concern. He has concern for everyone. You see, time is different for God. It's not the same for God. Time does not mean anything to God. But it reminds us that though our toils, our challenges, our hardships are endless, God sees a bigger picture. The image of fire that, that's presented here in the, in the Bible make us think about judgment. But it's really more than that. It's about refinement. It's about refining ourselves, the refiner's fire, because refiner's fire is what's necessary even to think about it. A refiner's fire is necessary even to refine precious metals. It must be used to, to burn away the chaff and allow the good to be there. And creation, that's the earth, that's you and I and everything in it. Creation requires perfecting as well which means it must also go through a purifying process. It's painful. It's painful. Many of us have gone through tough challenges in our lives and we're wondering, why, Lord? And a few years later or a few days later, we roll forward and we say, oh, that's why you put us through that, Lord. Thank you. Wow, I'm so much stronger because of that. And I even think about the pandemic that we're going through now. And I think, why, Lord, are you allowing all of this? But I can't help believe that he's building a foundation that will give us greater strength to spread his name and to glorify him in the future and to bring you the peace, the joy, the hope that only God can give you. Yes, it's a painful process, but many things that are worthwhile are painful. You see, there are sinful places in this world that need to be removed so that good remains. In verse 10, that we just read it's often mistaken as a it's uh, its interpretation is mistaken as destruction of the world but actually it's really taken out of context that way it's not about destruction of the world it's really a great disclosure about what the world is going to be following judgment the hidden the beauty will be revealed pure will, will experience purification and redemption not destruction, that will give us the new world, the peace, the joy, so there's no more sorrow, no more pain. That's what we're going through right now. And the, real, the reality is the heart of the text, it's, it's already but not yet. The already but not yet kingdom of God. You see, Christ brought the kingdom of earth. He brought the kingdom of God to earth through incarnation. That day, that very day, the day of the Lord was realized in many ways. The blind saw, wow, the blind saw freedom was declared for the captives. The lame were able to walk again. Lepers were healed. Justice, peace, hope, joy, those were all preached. The kingdom of God, though, it's not fully actualized until Christ's return for the second coming. The incarnation is the beginning. It's the beginning of it all. But it's not the end. It's not the end at all. Because sin still exists in the world. There's still disorder in the world. And many need to, to experience the healing of their hearts, the healing of diseases. We need to get rid of the high rates of slavery and wrongful imprisonment. That we have wrongful imprisonment globally. We think of challenges here, but things are, can be much worse globally with wrongful imprisonment, injustice, hatred. It goes everywhere. You can't turn on the TV without seeing it. We must be purged of all of this. And in the meantime, in the interim, we must live as people who are always ready. That's claiming the peace. I've told the story before, but when I had my heart attack, things were in great turmoil few years ago and my daughter-in-law she gave me this wonderful plaque that said the peace is really in the middle of God's life kind of like being in a hurricane the safest place 
in a hurricane is the, is the center of that hurricane. And if you're in the center of God's will, then you're going to sit and you're going to get that big grin on your face. You're going to say, wow, pastor, now I know the peace you're talking about. Despite everything else that's going on in the world, I can rest in God's presence. And he wants that for you now. You see, there are great examples in the Bible. That's why it's so important to turn to the scripture, to live in scripture, to get involved with the Bible every single day. The one great example of the already but not yet is, is Stephen in the book of Acts chapter 6 and 7. When Stephen is being stoned, he declares and he sees heaven open up and the Son of Man sees Jesus himself standing at the right hand of God. Wow. Think about that. This moment clearly illustrates the inbreaking of the kingdom of God actualizing itself right in front of them as Stephen's being stoned. But the people refuse to look at it. They refuse to recognize it. They refuse to, to claim that peace that you can claim today. To recognize that the kingdom of God is here. It's already but not yet. Stephen, he turns and he, in the midst of being stoned, after declaring that he sees Christ standing at the right hand side of God, he sees the heavens open up, which should be a real, a real eye opener to people that are around him. Instead, what does he do? He prays for them. He prays for these people and asks for forgiveness for them for what they have not seen and understood. Theologians, in fact, believe that this is a moment that the seed was planted in Paul's life that turned Paul around, that the Lord used to make Paul the person he was today. You see, Peter instructs the early church on how to live as people waiting for Christ's return. Peter mentions living at peace. We know Christ is the Prince of Peace. The overarching message of God's desire is to bring peace. The message of Christmas declares peace on earth. You've heard it many times. You've heard the song, peace on earth, goodwill to men. That's the message of Christmas. And Jesus preached peace at the Sermon of the Mount. He calls the peacemakers blessed. And if the message of the first coming church, if the message of the first coming is peace, so too is the message of the second coming. Christ will make all things whole. He'll make all things righteous. And it's a message for the living now. It's a message of peace. The declaration Peter makes about peace is joined with the idea of, of being blameless, of, of living life in purity, of living life in concert with the holiness of the Holy Spirit. If holiness can capture victory and over sin and death, it's possible to have a blameless life. It's possible to have peace, the peace that only God can offer. Righteousness is part of peace. Loving God and others, it's at the heart of living in peace. We, we can't do this passively, as peace is often, oftentimes mistaken for. This is a lesson about patience. If God is patient, then we're called to be patient as well. As people who still await the return of Christ, we live, we live in a kingdom a kingdom of people now. The kingdom of God is here now, and we must live there. And we must live as though we are in it. We must understand we're in it. We're, again, we're not to wait passively. We're to, we're to partner with the work of the Holy Spirit. And I've got a warning for you here. I've got a warning for you as you go through life. And you, you go through these experiences and you try to live your life in, with peace and joy and love for your neighbor. The warning is that history repeats itself. And just as Peter suffered scorn from others, suffered the questioning of others, the challenge of others, the dislike of others, the disrespect, disrespect just as, as Stephen did, you too can experience that. You too may experience the persecution 
as you live your life for Christ. We must find contentment in our own lives. In our homes, we must break the cycles of violence and abuse. And in our communities, we must change our attitude to ask, what's good for our neighbor? Instead of always looking just at ourselves. You see, as we are, as we're calling, as we're called to peace, this is not about the, the season or the time of year when things feel right. It's about a way of being. It's about a way of being. That's what it's all about. Christ is going to return. That's a promise. Christ will return. That's a promise. You can bank on that. I don't know when it's going to happen. The Bible teaches us we don't know when it's going to happen. But we are to live as citizens. Citizens of the coming of the kingdom of God. Recognizing that we're traveling through this world. If we're followers of Jesus. Not as citizens of earth. But as citizens of heaven. And it's time for us to start living that way. December is a natural time of year to stop and, and take stock of things and do that and to love others and to seek peace. But really, we should be doing that all year long. Christmas is a reminder of what Jesus is all about and what he can mean to you. But it's not, it's not something we should be honoring one day a year. It's something we should live our lives with all year long. I pray that you will seek and enjoy and claim the peace of Jesus this Christmas season. Father, thank you, Lord, for your message today. Thank you for your word that's always true and consistent. I pray, Lord, for each one of us that we will understand your peace, that we'll claim it, we'll enjoy it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. in the river I found peace by quiet streams I found peace on the mountain I found peace in fields of green I found peace in the dead
Thank you again for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure to be in your homes with you. I pray, as always, that, that you have not just watched this passively, but that you have become a part of this service. We, we love you. We want to pray for you. If there's anything going on in your life that we can do anything for you on, uh, please, please feel free to contact us. You can email me at pastor at lifepointnaz.com. We'd love to pray for you, do anything for you we can. We also want to thank you for the generosity of so many of you who have continued to give of your tithes and offerings. The work of the kingdom must go on. And there on your screen, you see some directions on how you can get your tithes and offerings to us. Uh, you can do it via text or via email or via the, the website. Or you can even just uh, mail it through snail mail at uh, PO Box 490, Real Into California, 95673, available to Life Point Church. We love and appreciate you. Let me pray. Father, thank you again. Thank you for this season that reminds us that you are always there. You're always available. You always love us and you never give up on us. Thank you for your scripture today that teaches that you're a patient God, that even those who, as we sit in turmoil and we're, we're trying to claim peace, we don't have peace because we worry about our kids or our parents, but we can claim the peace because we know you're a patient God who's waiting for each person to hear the word of God so that you can bring them to heaven with you. I pray, Lord, that each one of us is able to claim the peace through this busy season, and that as we get so busy and tied up with the stress of it all, that we're able to sit back and enjoy the holy presence of Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.